the 2016 election was an embarrassment of like colossal, <laughs> like a, a cartoonishly bad embarrassment uh, for the Democrats. And this, ha this happens a lot, too, because whenever you talk to anyone on the right and they say, hey, aren't you mad? Well, we say, listen, the election wasn't rigged. I mean, say what you want about the candidates or whatever, but there wasn't this, you know, widespread machine uh, creating millions of fake ballots for Biden. It, it's nonsense. And they love to respond with, oh, well, you call yourself a leftist. Don't you say that? The DNC rigged the rigged the primary against Bernie. Okay, when we say rigged, we're not saying they were churning out millions of fake ballots for Hillary Clinton. That's not what happened. She got the most ballots. Like we right. we have an adult understanding of the word rigged. What we're talking about here is <laughs> like you know they would they realized the more Bernie talked in front of the public, the higher his polls got. So they would schedule the debates like during football games and shit when people wouldn't watch it. Uh, they had well, honestly, like the oddly undemocratic aspect of superdelegates in the Democratic Party that the Republicans don't have, where it's, uh, you know, a year before any votes are cast, but somehow Hillary Clinton has 500 superdelegates because they can just pledge, you know, way out in advance, and Bernie has zero. So whenever they reported the delegates, you always saw Hillary Clinton with an 80% lead, even though she had roughly the same amounts as Bernie, but the super. So, yeah, that's what we talk about. When we're talking about rigged. We're not talking about, you know, 2000 mules or some dog shit that's, you know, rotting you guys' brain. But it's uh, it's unfortunate. That's the same word. Dude, Oops. 2016 was the year I, I lost faith in this country. Same. And it was it was exactly that, like seeing all of the nuanced ways in which like the direction of all these events is manipulated and controlled. And I was like, Oh my God. And then I remember in 2020, I listened to solidarity forever while I went to go past my primary, cast my primary ballot for Bernie. And that was the last time I was happy. Was <laughs> that was the last time I was happy. That was the last time I was happy. Point blank. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just various levels of miserable or pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> now I just wear this shirt. <laughs> no, Bernie, <laughs> Bernie is, Bernie's the only old white man that I want to be. <laughs> I mean, not anymore. Now he's garbage. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> but I used to. He, yeah. He would still were... be better than Biden. Yeah. Yeah, those were good days when we when we thought we 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 were such fucking simpletons and we thought, ah, oh, Bernie's got a chance. Well, yeah, we'll we'll get Bernie in there. They uh, they won't like railroad him at the earliest convenience. Yeah, those were. Uh, it has been dark times since then because Bernie's not going to run again. You know, it's not. He's he's uh, it's it, that, and there doesn't seem to be a deep deep bench for people that we really uh, are. It, even if we find someone that we like again, I mean, it, it maybe it was a good lesson to learn too to not put your hope in a person. Like maybe that was that which we should have known, but that you know everyone is a like what, you, what James mentioned with the Sanders that everyone will eventually let you down, and so not to uh, find yourself a hero to rally around, but you know the community and the the population is what we should and the uh, values, and maybe it's a hard lesson to learn, but it's good we learned it when we did. I think. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this dumb idea, um, which is there's an issue on the left that I'm sure we all know, left unity, there is none. We're all mad at each other. <laughs> and we all hate each other. And none of us want to go into any of the existing groups. So we're like, we're going to make our own group. Um, but we all agree on like a lot of policies, whether and like on almost every level of the left um and i was like what if there's a thing instead of like creating a new party or um wanting bernie you know a singular person some kind of thing like that that we did like the left's version of project 2025 you get like a series of policies that uh sort of like there was like that medicare for all thing that happened like four or five mm -hmm. years ago or whatever and they had like people on the right people on the left this is not for the right this is only for the left but it's only for the left around a broad set of policies so that we can like have some sort of like unified approach to to politics the problem james is Tell that me. kind of exactly what tj was saying how there can't be a left-wing daily wire there can't be a left-wing project 2025 because our our power is not consolidated it, like, like like there's no like a couple special interests that can write this and then the rank and file just go through with it like th there is no centralized authority and so it's kind of hard to get a single project that we can all rally around it, and that it has right to be there, there like that right there is why it's hilarious that they think that 
we somehow stole the election. Like we have. No <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> first of all, they say how dumb we are, right? But then they think that we're smart enough to do that. Mm -hmm. We're less organized than they are. That's what I say, Brie, about Donald Trump. Like the reason that, like, I'm genuinely not that worried about Donald Trump because this is the guy that scheduled his very important speech at Four Seasons Landscaping. Like, they, like, like, as much as yeah, Project 2025 is terrifying. Once you remember that Donald Trump is the one who has to execute it. It's like it's, it becomes a lot less scary, but yeah, I, that's why. But James, I do think that Medicare. Do you not think that example. us as like content creators that I think I I've grown to know so many um, mm -hmm. of you guys like in the past like year and a half or two or since I started doing this, and those dialogues are open. All those people are really willing to um, rally around some some message. Like I, I've I've had some version of this conversation with quite a few people. Um, so like, you know, there's different kinds of capital. We're not going to have money capital ever. Um, what about human and social capital that we do have access to, that we have really bootstraps for ourselves? Is that not a valid thing? I think it helps. And it, it helps because it gives us reach. We can reach people. And that at the end of the day, is gonna, that's the hardest thing is to get your word out. But then you have, you know, apps like TikTok where they suppress you. So, yeah, go ahead, TJ. I think the primary problem for I, there is the John and I talked about this yesterday is that when it comes to people on the right, oh, but, oh, first I'll say, James, when you said that, uh, can we do something like our own part of 2025? I thought you meant like you know, overthrowing democratic norms and installing us, yeah, let's go, <laughs> let's go, let's do it our way, but let's do it. um. But uh, but I, I think uh, the main problem uh, with the left is uh, something that John and I talked about yesterday is that when it comes to right wingers, there is pretty much one type of person. You have a right wing conservative, usually white Christian. Like that's that's a James was not interested in my message. <laughs> like PJ, Hi. Oh, no, sorry, my cam just went down for a second. <laughs> After this go. guy, no, shut up, PJ. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. So conservatives, it's really easy for them to consolidate around any of the, you know, the four things that they care about and then the tack on a shitload of bigotry. But with us, it's a lot different because uh, just people, not even leftists, but people who are nominally on the left, is that you're going to have, you know, the black community, the queer community, the white working class community. Well, uh, a good chunk, not most of them, apparently, of the white working class community, uh, feminists, uh, you know, Native Americans, uh, uh, you know, Latino immigrants, it's people who have a lot of similar goals, but they also have goals that don't necessarily coincide. They don't converge. And it's very easy. We see it all the time where leftists, we, we don't have a lot of power, uh, institutional power or actual power in the United States. And so what we hold really valuable, what we really hold dear is esoteric knowledge. Like we love being smarter than other people. And we take every possible opportunity we can to shit on other people and say, oh, okay, you haven't read this 19th century text on uh, social, okay. And so we, we do this shit all the time. And I mean, it's not just a joke, we really do. And, and that's why it's hard to get us to work together and everyone has their own pet ideas. And so like Medicare was a good one. Like, cause that's one that we could kind of all rally around and that one didn't work either. <laughs> like it's weird. So it's, I think it's possible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's a lot more difficult for us than it would be for anyone on the right. And the third issue that we're going to have is and this applies necessarily to leftists, not necessarily people who are just like liberals on left is that there just aren't as many of us as we'd like to think uh, people who are like actually leftists, you know, uh, people like anywhere to the left of progressives. There are people who are, you know, liberals or maybe even conservatives that would have a leftist view or two, but people who would actually, you know, uh, identify with enough of these qualities to get behind a movement is fairly small. I, I'm co comparatively to the rest of the voting populace. And I sound like a doomer here, uh, but I'm just saying that it's a, uh, no, no, it's no. possible. Go ahead. No, I understand one, the prag pragmatism and the cynicism. Um, I think that uh, I'm always dancing between the poles of hopelessness and cynicism. yeah. There's very, you know, there's not like a, a bright side on that. Um, but, you know, when you look at specific policies, like I'm, they don't even need to be socialist. You know, I'm not talking about like socialist policies here. You know, I'm talking about like um, effectively, like I made some dumb video a couple months ago. I was like, this is the bare minimum if any fucking politician wants me to vote for them. And it's like bare minimum policies, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
whether it's uh you know medicare for, or like a single payer healthcare I'm not using medicare for all anymore that was co-op <laughs> um single payer healthcare federal jobs guarantee these all have more than half of the population uh supporting them um the green new deal or like or, or like cert certain like sustainability um efforts uh, those ones have broad based support but they do mm -hmm. have like, right support or uh right um whatever the opposite of support is um <laughs> and uh I, i'm like that's i guess what i was trying to or what i was imagining not so much yeah. like claudia and karina being like we're going to seize the biggest 100 companies which i want i want them to win that'd be fucking tight it's not gonna happen but i'm that's not what i'm even saying I'm like there's stuff where every each of these policies has anywhere from like 53 to like 75 percent of the population supporting them because we're all fucked by them the same way so but James. and oh, also to address one thing i think that the right has just as many particularities um as the left does like our own little pet projects because you you i think you grouped them in with just like general um like oh, i forget what the bigotry mm -hmm. but all that bigotry is tied to some desired social formation that they want um but they're really good at sacrificing particularity for a single goal in that moment and they're like we'll we'll go for that thing later and i think that that's the one thing that the left isn't good at right now is they're like if i can't have it all right now i don't want nothing and i'm going to stop you from being able to do it and yes that is a big fucking issue so i think james and i i don't want to have come off as a doomer because that is the opposite like i i'm someone who fights against doomerism i just think that a coordinated plan such as 20 project 2025 is impossible on the left however i think what is possible and i've talked about this before there's two key factors that i think can give us a path to victory one being demographic change once the boomers start dying it's going to have a massive wealth shift downward to people who have already been radicalized you're going to end up with a lot of millennials who have all of this pent up. They didn't like they, they haven't moved right like previous generations have because they haven't gotten the money. And by the time they get the money, they're going to be too far gone to ever go back. And so uh, hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, fingers crossed. But like I made no never... promises, John. I made no promises. I'm like, once I get that money, bro. I did. He's like, well, once my dad has yeah, to get that house, I'm fast, out of here. Quick end. I'm out. <laughs> but, but that that is going to happen in the next 20 years. And the other thing that we're seeing right now, which I don't think is going to stop, is the labor movement. I think that we are because that yeah. is something that it's not just a progressive thing. It is a centrist thing. Yep. It's a right wing thing. You see support for this across the political spectrum. And so if you have organized union leaders and if you look at what Sean Fain did with the he, he nailed it. He absolutely nailed it in an economy that has become so complex. You can absolutely shut it down with very little effort and coordination and that's exactly what he did with the with, with the auto work like he just said okay we're gonna have a hundred people strike over here on this day we're gonna have 20 people strike over here on this day we are not really exposing ourselves but it's causing millions of losses because of the supply chain is so complex if what you is, have you stand up strikes uh, what i forget i forget it was, it was the was strike, right? strike, strike, like what they used to be it was like mm -hmm. stand up stand up strike. yeah i, no. I forget very, exactly cool. what he called them um but yeah it's exactly what it is so if you have a couple major unions that grow power and organize that would give institutional power at the same time that a lot of progressive people are getting financial power and we have a demographic shift which causes the entire electoral landscape to shift i that is when the iron is going to be hot to strike and when we can accomplish massive policy change i do think like medicare years, for all like that's the question. Legal, what, what was that Bray? i said do we have 20 years though that's the question well, well i think we have 2028 20 strike oh. planned and i know that there's other topics to talk about so we don't need mm -hmm. to get into it but the timing of that electorally wise or like electoral wise yeah. is mm, interesting that's what it, that's going to be the shot across the bow i think james and well you know I, I'm optimistic, and maybe I'm naive, <laughs> but I I do think that like the tides they are a change. Tides, yeah, I think Sean Payne is going to be a pretty uh, important figure for the United States, uh, you know, policy in the next coming years because he did a great job 
And like I said, he had a plan that made sense. It wasn't just wildcat shit all over the place. Yeah. He actually had a structure in place. And I know this goes completely counter against what we started this conversation with. Mm -hmm. But another thing that would be great, so I hate to say it, I really hate to say it, is a charismatic person to get behind. <laughs> I mean, it's, we talk about it, it sucks so much that this is how it, it would have I knew you were about to hit it. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. It's so yeah. shitty. And like, we. You know, it's like we, we joke about how elections, this is something I say all the time, elections are a popularity contest. That's exactly what they are. I mean, yeah. people will vote for people who they like, people who have good vibes. Like, how often, have, oh, well, it's happens to you guys, me and John are talking all the time. I'm sure Bree and James, you guys run across this where you're talking to someone who's like a moderate or a conservative. They're like, yeah, you know, actually, what you say makes a lot of sense. And like, they like you or they would vote for you, but you know, leftist policies they're not big fans i was like okay that doesn't make any goddamn sense at all why would you support someone like me when i would be again but people aren't as bright as or they don't think as critically as you know we would perhaps like them to but that's it's an unfortunate reality of the human nature but it would be great if there was someone uh who could champion these causes that that people just vibed with I wish John Stewart would run, would run. We brought that many times. We brought yeah. that up many times. Like John Stewart would be. I mean, look, he's not. He's not nearly he's left not as perfect. we are, but no. But he'd be a great vehicle uh, to get something through because he would win. First, some he bare would. minimum stuff. Yes, he, he would. would. Yeah, yeah. He would. He would do the bare minimum. Yeah, if th that's Project Twenty Twenty Eight right there. The ticket is John. Well, Drag no, John. Sean Fain organizes the strikes in Twenty Twenty Eight, um, and and John Stewart runs for president and. That that's our project 2025, James. We answered the question. Welcome to the left wing. Thank so, you for being here. 